I'm not sure about Canadian law because I haven't studied yeah. case law up there. But here, mm -hmm. what we're focusing on is compelling interest. Compelling interest has already been defined in law and in fact. Compelling interest is a threat to public health and safety of such a magnitude right. that, the, that the law enforcement officer cannot, under any circumstances, ignore it. Hmm. Therefore, once an exception is made to the law for something like medical use, which has been right. done here in the United States, well, yeah. L.V. Masica hmm. testified at my pretrial hearing that she was receiving marijuana from the federal government. Well, once the federal government is giving a person marijuana for medical purposes, that means there is no compelling interest to enforce a total prohibition by definition. Exactly. Know that because, again, the example is drunk driving. There is simply no occasion where a law enforcement officer can allow somebody to drive drunk period. Mm -hmm. That's where compelling interest hits the ground. If there's any exception to the question of can this activity occur, if there's any exception whatsoever, it is not a compelling interest on the part of government to prohibit it. And that's where we get in with religious exercise. Now you have a uh, religious case going or you're planning one. What's, ha what's happening with that? I have been, through you, thank God, uh, in contact with many of the religious uh, exercise individuals uh, around the country, the United States and outside the country, uh, since 1994. Uh, my case is ripe for appeal, personally. Many of those individuals, such as Jeff Brown and Carl Olson of the Ethiopian Zion Coptic Church, have the opportunity to go back into federal court and overturn their convictions from years ago, because REFRA, REFRA says that it applies to all laws and all cases prior to and after the Religious Freedom Restoration Act was enacted. So they have legal standing to go back into court. Anybody that has been arrested and persecuted and or threatened with arrest and persecution has grounds to gather together as a group, go into a federal court, probably in the uh, D.C. Circuit, because we'd be multi-jurisdictional, uh, coming from different parts of the United States, go into the D.C. Circuit, file for an injunction the same way the UDV Church did, and Jeffrey Bronfman did, mm -hmm. and force the courts to admit that REFRA applies to the marijuana laws, and that since uh, administrative law judge from the Drug Enforcement Agency, Young, back in 1988, made his official decision that 1,500 pounds of marijuana is a l consumed within 15 minutes is a lethal dosage. Mm -hmm. And since that dosage of marijuana is no more toxic than 10 raw potatoes or a bottle of aspirin, as a matter of fact, found by the fact finder under the drug law who is responsible for making those findings a fact, their expert, their government expert, and as a matter of law, because aspirin is a regulated drug and potatoes are sold in commerce and have regulations applied to them, federal regulations, and since those are freely available to any seven-year-old child, six, four-year-old child could walk into a grocery store and buy 10 raw potatoes or buy a bottle of aspirin without question. Therefore, under commerce, the government has no compelling interest to prohibit anybody from walking into a grocery store and buying 1,500 pounds of marijuana. It's a, it's a one thing is one thing, another thing is the same thing, therefore you can't discriminate between the two in commerce. And of course, in religion, we're not in commerce at all, we're, we're a fundamental right, so since they wouldn't even have an excuse under commerce to prohibit somebody from growing, uh, growing and, and possessing and selling marijuana, they certainly don't have any legitimate compelling interest, public health and safety issue, to do so in terms of religion. So we'd be going back into court and trying to get that decision out of the uh, federal courts. Now, um, what, what, what can people do to help you see this through? Uh if they are people who have standing, in other words, they have been threatened or they have suffered persecution, they can join in with the group. And uh, a little bit later, I hope you'll uh, put out the, uh, the email address where they can contact us. Yeah, yeah, say it now, and then we'll, we'll stick it up on the screen. Oh, sure. Um, it's R, all these are small letters, R-E-V-T-O-M 
B R O W N at hotmail dot com. Rev Tom Brown at hotmail dot com. <laughs> hotmail dot com. And so they can talk to us, and, and maybe you know, they can uh, join in, and uh, or they can do an independent action, because at this time it isn't certain whether we'll be able to do a unified action or a number of us will, in concert, go into federal court different circuits and file individual actions. Now, what kind of uh, uh, you know, documentation are you hoping to provide to show your sincerity of your belief? I guess your history, your own history even, of uh, what you've been through and the fact that you're continuing to fight. Uh, uh, for this, despite already serving time, so you're not really you're not going to win your time back or anything like that. Uh, um, but are you going to try and provide any sort of historical background or anything like that? Let me ask. Let me answer the general question: How does somebody demonstrate sincerity? Mm -hmm. All right. In the case of the UDV Church, and this has already been to the Supreme Court and it's already been signed off on, basically. So I'm, I'm, we're on good ground here. The UDV Church, run by Jeffrey Bronfman, Jeffrey instructed his church members to hold it secret that they were members of the church and to not discuss it with anybody else who was not a member of the church in order to avoid persecution by state or federal authorities. It's like an old Gnostic practice as well. There, well, now, there were Gnostics who concealed their religious practices. Mm -hmm. However, all of those Jesus followers that went to the lions were also Gnostics. They, however, made a decision that rather than conceal their religious exercise, that they would best advance themselves in terms of the Holy Spirit by publicly and forthrightly declaring their religious exercise as a follower of Jesus, as somebody who wouldn't go to another temple and eat uh, of the sacrifice that was made, or, or whatever it was that the emperor was requiring them to do. So they were Gnostic practitioners. It was in 325 when Constantine, the, the Roman emperor, saw the cross of Jesus leading his troops to victory, when he then hijacked the Jesus movement into being a state-sponsored religion. That's when the beginning of the end of Jesus Gnostic practitioners occurred. In this sign, I shall conquer. That, that, that's what it said. In this sign, I shall conquer. That's the... Uh, what he saw on the banner around Christ's cross and his vision he claims to have had. That's what he claimed. Yeah. And then I think he went on to kill his mother or son or something like that shortly thereafter. Yeah, well, uh, murder is murder, and uh, boy, you murder somebody, and pretty soon you're murdering somebody else, and yeah. it just grows on you. There you go. Well, um, that's fascinating, and uh, um, hopefully we will be able to follow this as it goes on. I really think that, and probably this is something that you feel as well, is that uh, uh, these court cases uh, uh, regarding the religious use of cannabis, they are very, very pivotal because it is a holy sacrament. It is an agent sacrament, and it always has been a religious war. In fact, I would even say that uh, Bush's war and focus on cannabis is even uh, part of his own religious dogma. It's like witch hunting and uh, trying to burn out the pagans or something like that in his view. Um, and so it's a religious war anyways. It's more than a drug war. It's an ideological war. If that wasn't the case, they wouldn't be uh, investing billions in faith-based drug treatment programs. So uh, um, uh, I'm glad that you're still at it after all these years, and uh, I, I look forward to uh, following what happens with this.